Hello, I'm Bill Bullard, Tharcalf USA, the voice of the independent cattle producer in the United States of America. Well, just over a generation ago, there were hundreds of thousands of hog farmers scattered all across the United States. 667,000 of them, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, or USDA. But the globalist meatpackers believed there were just too many of those pesky hog farmers to manage properly. So they began to systematically eliminate the cash market for hogs by shifting their preferred hog farmers out of the cash market and into production and marketing contracts known as Alternative Marketing Arrangements, or AMAs. Now, rumors indicated that some of the now very large corporate hog farms were receiving sweetheart deals from the packers. Deals that ensured they would make a profit while independent hog farmers perished. Soon the cash market for hogs disappeared. And so did the hog farmers. Nine out of ten of those hog farmers are gone today. And it happened fast. Just from 1990 to 2012, 75% of all the remaining hog farmers vanished. Today, there's fewer than 67,000 hog farmers remaining, and the USDA is predicting pork production will exceed beef production next year. So yes, the globalist meat packers made kings out of the fewer than 10% of the hog farmers remaining, and rural communities across America lost their economic drivers. And you can bet that a large number of the surviving 10% lobbied hard to prevent Congress from preserving a competitive cash market for independent hog producers. They weren't about to give up their seats at the throne, and Congress and the USDA made certain they wouldn't have to. So now this kingmaking paradigm, which is the elimination of the hog farmer model, is being applied to the U.S. cattle industry. The cattle model is more similar than different. You see, hogs are confined from birth to slaughter, while cattle aren't confined until they reach about 900 pounds. So the cattle industry's king-making process is initially focused on the feedlot sector, not on the entire live cattle supply chain, but the rest of the industry will certainly soon follow. Now there are three critical elements needed to implement the king-making model in the feedlot industry. First is marketplace concentration, where the marketplace is controlled by only a few meat packers. Second is the coordinated action of the concentrated meat packers, meaning that all of them participate in the shrinking of the cash market and result in the elimination of marketing opportunities for independent cattle feeders that do not have a contract. And third is loyalty and support from those feedlots who think they could be kings. So how far into this king-making paradigm is the feedlot sector of the live cattle industry? Well, there's no doubt that the fed cattle market is highly concentrated, as just four meat packers now control 85% of it. So the first element is established. And it's quite apparent that all four of the big four packers are contributing to the reduced purchases in the cash market, as contracts now make up about 80% of all fed cattle procurement. So the second element appears to be established. And now for the third element. Is there loyalty and support among a sufficient number of feedlots to help the meat packers prevent Congress from taking any meaningful steps to prevent the elimination of independent feedlots? And the answer, of course, is yes. We've lost 75% of our independent feedlots in just the past 25 years. And for the past 20 years, bills have been introduced in Congress to prevent the destruction of the cash market. And for 20 years, Congress refused to act on any of those bills. Two years ago, Senator Grassley introduced his 5014 bill to require packers to purchase at least 50% of their cattle in the cash market and it was met with overwhelming resistance from organizations like the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and the American Farm Bureau Federation, and by the largest of feedlot owners, some of whom were summoned to testify during recent congressional hearings about how the sky would fall if the largest meat packers were restricted in any way on their continued use of AMAs. And then we have the recent academic study that reveals that some of the would-be king feedlots are receiving sweetheart deals such as bonuses, risk-sharing arrangements, and financing that grossly distorts the fed cattle market for everyone else. There's no question that the king-making process is well underway in the feedlot sector of the cattle industry. Have you called your senators and representatives yet to tell them to put a stop to it? If you haven't done that, I can tell you where your industry will be in the near future, and it's going to look a lot like the hog industry. So please go to www.r-calfusa.com to join with us and learn how you can help put a stop to this. With that, have a productive week. Thank you and goodbye.